NCASE V6 to V7 transition webinar series, performing the investigation. In the next few minutes, we will begin the investigation using the case we prepared in Part 1 of the webinar series. Now, if you didn't catch Part 1, you can find the webinar on the Guidance Software website. As with Part 1, the purpose of the webinar isn't to provide detailed training on the multitude of features and capabilities in V7. Rather, the point of this webinar is to cover some of the most common scenarios that have presented challenges to our NCASE V6 users. Now, to that end, we will discuss performing queries against the new V7 index, reviewing and working with email, and a few tips regarding smartphone analysis. With that, let's begin. To start, we will open the case we prepared in Part 1 of the webinar series. As a brief overview, remember when you first open a case, you will see the InCase home screen. From this screen, you can get to just about anywhere in the product. First, let's verify our evidence has been processed. To do this, let's click on the Evidence link. This opens the Evidence tab. Here we can check the name of our evidence and get some high-level information about each item. The column we are most interested in here is the processing status. You can see here that every item in our case has been processed. This tells us that previously the in-case evidence processor was run against this evidence and created an evidence cache. Remember the evidence cache is where the output of the evidence processor is held. Now let's take a quick look at one of these caches. The first thing you may ask when opening the evidence cache is what's with all the files? Good question. Unlike other solutions, InCase doesn't require a bulky database backend. Rather, InCase uses a combination of logical evidence files, SQLite databases, bin files, and a few other proprietary file types to store processed evidence. This approach reduces the total cost of ownership for an organization, removing the need to purchase the software and hardware to support a large database. The thing you need to remember about the evidence cache is that the logical evidence files and the other files in the cache have been created by InCase and are not intended to be used manually. InCase will manage the access to this data to optimize both performance and stability, so you as a user should not manipulate these items. Now if your organization is making use of the standalone InCase processor dongle to prepare your evidence, you may have to change the path of the evidence cache from time to time. To do this, you will click the Change Evidence Cache button and enter the location of the processed evidence. This location could be local to your system or somewhere on your organization's network. When you have the Evidence Cache path set, click OK. Now you will see that if your processing status was unprocessed before, the status will change to Processed. Now that we've verified our evidence, let's take a look at performing queries against the new V7 index. To do this, let's go back to the home page and click the search link. This opens the search tab. Now there are three panes here. The top left pane drives the other panes in that what we search for will populate the right pane and the bottom pane on the screen. Now in the left pane, you have three sub-tabs, index, tags, and keywords. This design allows you, if needed, to enter a query of the index, use tags as a, another filter on your search, and include keyword search results all in one combined search. Now for the purpose of today's discussion, we will focus on the index tab. Now you can think of the index tab window as a dynamic, real-time search engine. As you type a word, say distribution in our example, InCase will automatically populate the pane directly below the input window with a list of how often that word is found in the index. In the same way, an internet search engine might immediately begin displaying results for a word entered into the search engine. You will see that word and some variations of the word listed, along with the number of hits and the number of items. Now the text is blue, which tells us that we can click on it. Now when we click on one of the words, the pane to the right automatically shows the results for that word. Pretty simple. One thing you'll want to remember, if for example you find these results important, you're going to want to save the results. To do so, click the Save Results button 
enter a name, and you will have the results now persistent with your case. Now for the right-click fans, you can also access save results by right-clicking and selecting save results. If you're curious where the results are saved, you will find them in your base case folder in a subfolder called results. Again, you don't need to do anything with those files that are saved in that location, but I do understand knowing where data is stored is an important part of learning, so now you know. Now let's get back to querying the index. The query language is described in great detail in the user guide and in the help inside of Encase. So I will highlight some of the high points here. First and simplest, you can enter a word or a series of words in the input window. If you want to search for items that include all of the words you enter, just leave a space between them. Encase will automatically enter AND logic into the query, just as it has done for me here. If you need to review items that have any of the words, you would need to change the logic. You can do this in a few different ways, either by highlighting the AND, right-clicking and selecting Change Logic, clicking the AND OR button, or simply typing OR in place of AND. Now obviously the OR logic will be a wider search, but in many cases this is what it's called for. Again, this is a very basic query of the index. Now, you might want to find out if a word or a few words are used in the same sentence or paragraph. To do that, we can perform a proximity search. So, if I wanted to find items where soda is within 15 words of meeting, I type soda, w slash 15 meeting, and click the green triangle, or hit the enter button. Just like that, I get a list of items, in this case emails, where soda and meeting were in fairly close proximity. Again, if this is interesting to me, I might want to save the results. Right click, save results, name it, and I'm done. I want to also point out here that Encase has built in stemming capabilities, which allows you to enter a word, and Encase will automatically include variations of the word in the query. In my example, I entered meet, and by clicking the stemming option, I had the option to add different variations of the words, such as met, meeting, and meets. Now these are just a few examples of how we can query the index using words. For more information on the index query options, please refer to the Encase help. Now let's talk about a few more things about querying the index. You will notice in the index tab there is a field drop-down list. From this list, you can query the index for values of a specific field. For instance, say we wanted to quickly review all items that are pictures. To do this, I simply hit Highlight the Category, which shows me another drop-down list where I select Picture. Encase populates the query input window automatically with the category Picture. I then click Enter or the green triangle, and just like that, I see all the pictures in my evidence. Now I'm going to save these results as pictures for later use. One of the most common types of queries that you probably will be writing are those that filter the results based on a date. To do this, I select the date field from the fields menu. In this example, I selected created. Then I enter the date in a year, month, day format. Now here is why I have some options. If I want everything that was created after the date, I enter, I type, the three periods and the pound sign, and click Enter. Encase will show me everything that was created after this date. Now on the other hand, if I want to see everything that was created before the date I entered, I put three periods in front of the date like this. Encase then shows me everything that was created before this date. Lastly, if I want to see all items created between two dates, I simply enter the two dates with three periods in between them and Encase uses those dates as the boundary for my filter. Now for our purposes, I'm going to search for all files created between two dates and save my results. Next to the Fields menu, you will see a Pattern drop-down menu. This menu can be used to review the results of the Personal Identifiable Information Processing if you selected it to be included as part of your index. You will see we included pre-built patterns for credit cards, email addresses, phone numbers, and social security numbers. 
The PII module is very powerful, but I do want to remind you that if you select this as part of your processing, you will see processing time increase significantly. As NCASE will be performing comprehensive searching for patterns, that can be very time consuming. Best practice here is to use this module when you need it. If you only need to find email addresses, for example, it may be easier for you to write a query for common email address words or providers. Okay, to, so to recap, we have performed a few queries using words, proximity search, field specific values, and dates. Now let's review our saved results. To do so, click on the results from the view menu now. Here we can take a look at the results again, but this is only half of it. The real power of the results view comes from the ability to combine results. Say we were interested in reviewing all pictures created in December 2010. I certainly could have written a combined query to get to this data, but from the results tab, I can do this very quickly. I selected my created in December 2010 search result and my picture result and click the combine button. Now I have two choices. I can choose can match any or must match all. Let's choose must match all. I enter a name for this new combined result set, pictures created in December 2010 and click OK. Now I have just combined my results into a new filtered result. This is a very simple way to filter down your evidence to help you progress your investigation. Here's one other tip about index search. Let's go back to the search tab. I am going to look again at all items in the picture category. Now if you wanted to do a quick check for items that were created, modified, accessed, or written around a specific item of interest, all I need to do is highlight my item of interest, hover over one of the date fields that I'm interested in, right click, and select the Select Find Related by Times option. Now this opens an easy to use query builder where you can specify the days, hours, minutes, even seconds before and after your target date that you're interested in. You can also select which type of date you are interested in. Click OK and InCase will filter down your results to files that fall within that range. Now this can be especially handy when you want to determine the sequence of events that may have occurred in your case. Now I do want to reiterate, what we've covered here merely scratches the surface of the power of performing queries against an index. Please do reference the help file and the NCASE Essentials training for more information about this powerful capability. In V7, email has been completely overhauled to make it easier and more intuitive to use. To begin, let's perform an index query for the word distribution. You will notice that many of the items displayed in the results are in fact emails. If I wanted to access them directly from here, I simply highlight my item of interest and click the Go to File button or select it from the right click menu. This immediately takes me to the email that is within a PST file. Notice that while we are in what looks to be the records view, we are in fact still in the search tab. This is not a mistake. The idea here is that from the search results, we may want to look at many files that could be anywhere within the evidence set. To allow users to easily go back to the search results at any time, we designed a search to work in many ways, like an internet search engine. Just like when searching the web, if you click a link to a website, you can use the back button to get back to your search results. The same is true here. When I am done reviewing this email, I can click the back button and go back to my search results. Okay, back to the email. In V7, email looks, well, like email. Unlike in V6 and V7, we have designed an email specific view that allows users to easily scroll through emails just as they might do with their own email. It's very simple. On the screen, we can see the from to info and the body of the email. Now, if I want to view the other data associated with the email, I click the field button and see detailed metadata, metadata for the email. There are a couple of features here you should be aware of. Show conversation and find related by subject. 
With show conversation, I can see all the emails that were part of the email conversation, which is sometimes called the email thread, that included my email of interest. Here I can gain further context around the email and potentially find new evidence that can help forward my investigation. You can also find related by subject. This feature will display all emails that have the same subject, ignoring the re and the forward characters in the subject line. This can be especially useful to see if any spin-off or one-off conversations have occurred around the same subject. Email is certainly one of the most changed features in Encase in V7, so I strongly recommend you review the Encase Essentials training and the user guide to learn how the new email capabilities in V7 can help speed your investigations. Lastly, I wanted to show you how you can perform quick analysis of smartphone data. Now in part one of the webinar series, I showed you how you can acquire smartphone data using this simple interface. Now that we have smartphone evidence, which in our case we've also processed, we can review the data just like any other piece of evidence. You could, use, you could also use the built-in smartphone report to review the data you have acquired. Now to be clear, you do not have to process your smartphone evidence to be able to use the smartphone report. Now to, to access the smartphone report, click on the smartphone report from the tools menu Select the evidence files you want to include in the report, and InCase will then create a report showing you the evidence in an easy to review format. Now here you can select what information you wish to review, such as contacts, call logs, SMS, MMS, pictures, to name a few. You also have the option to show a detailed or summary report. You could then export the results of the report to share with others that are interested in the data. Again, this is just a simple way to get a quick look at the smartphones included in your investigation. Now to recap, we discussed the basics of querying the index, reviewing email, and an analyzing smartphone results in V7. For more information on these topics, please reference the user guides, and of course, don't forget about the InCase Essentials V7 on-demand training. That is free for everyone. Now be sure to tune in for part 3 of our V6 to V7 webinar series where we will take a look at tagging and bookmarking items and the new InCase review package in V7. Thanks for your time.